Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I am your host, Brian Scott, and I have found a treasure trove of new channelings by Quo that we haven't gone over in the past. Some of these are from practice channelings that they have kind of done a practice channeling circle that are not as fully accurate. Some of them have some very fascinating information about a variety of subjects. So it's sort of a hodgepodge. We're talking about everything from convergence to reality creation to healing, and they all carry incredible wisdom. The first channeling comes from February of 2020, right at the very beginning of the virus crisis, as we should call it. Jim says, I am Kuo In, and with this instrument at this time, we greet each of you in love and in light. We thank each of you for inviting our presence in your circle of seeking this afternoon. This is a great privilege for us, for it is our way of being in service to others and thereby progressing further along our own spiritual path. Thus, together we walk the same path. We would ask our usual favor of you, that is, that you take the words and concepts which we offer to you in response to your queries and use them in whatever fashion has meaning for you. If any do not have meaning, set them aside without a second thought. This then frees us to speak as we will and share more of that love and light of the one creator that shines within us all this day. The first question is, there was a common theme in our discussion before this channeling about a sort of convergence of energy and that we're all noticing spiritual capabilities and powers that seem more available than they were before. Could you perhaps comment on the nature of this sudden increase in energy? Quo says, I am Quo and am aware of your query, my sister. The cosmic energies of the fourth density vibrations continue to stream towards your planetary sphere in a manner which may be seen as waves. Shall we say almost as if they were waves upon the beach? When a certain wave crashes upon the shore, it brings with it certain opportunities that those who are open to such opportunities may take advantage of. As the progressive crashing of the waves upon the shore continues, there is an increasing opportunity to move to those energy centers within each seeker of truth. We should say, conscious seeker of truth, that have need of being more activated and energized so that they are functioning in a more full and bright manner. These waves of cosmic streamings then are a kind of intensification or magnifier of the potential that awaits within each conscious seeker of truth, so that as the waves hit the centers of energy, they begin to intensify the potential that was pre-incarnatively programmed within each energy center. This potential is the framework for the pre-incarnative choices of lessons to be learned. For many, there is a great similarity in what is occurring. For there are very basic lessons that are necessary to be able to utilize upon your third density planet. The interrelationships of the orange ray, of one-to-one -one personal relationships, is that which is the beginning of the expansion of the intelligent energy that moves through the red ray up to the orange ray. The group energies of the yellow ray then are next in line for activation when the time is right for the seeker and when the appropriate energies have been set in motion in its own life pattern. The unique configuration for each seeker is then added by the crashing of the waves upon the shore of the entity's consciousness. There is also the target, shall we say, of this third density illusion in the green and ray energy center, the activation of the heart, so that unconditional love and compassion may be released. And the entity then is what you may call harvestable, or able to be a candidate for moving into the fourth density of love and compassion. These energies from the, shall we say, distant stars are a combination of the universal intelligent energy that is omnipresent and yet which at some point in what you call time takes a direction so that according to the clock-like face of the galactic spiral, there is the sending of these energies to the correct location that will aid all seekers of truth who are ready for such aid. Those who are not ready and who are not conscious seekers may find difficulties within their life patterns occurring if they are not able to defend themselves, either consciously or subconsciously, from such crashing of waves of intelligent energy 
upon their shores of consciousness. Thus, these experiences that each seeker has that are in common with many other seekers have a unique flavor for each seeker. For though all may learn the same types of lessons, each lesson learned in a personal and a unique fashion for each of you is like a snowflake, unique to yourself and like no other. In another question, concerning the waves of intelligent energy in streaming and touching upon our individual and group consciousness, if you could comment on how these in-streamings of intelligent energy will be raising up the frequency of our planet and those of us seeking to serve others, and how those who are seeking to be better or higher healers, workers in energy and with spirit to help others, how their energies may increase to help others because of these in-streaming waves of intelligent energy. Is there a point where they may align the seeking to help others aligned with the higher energies and such work becomes more available and more effective? I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my sister. These cosmic in-streamings of intelligent energy find their focus within each seeker's energy centers as the seeker is ready for such. The seeker who is pursuing the path of healing is one who has gone beyond the green ray energy center, has moved into the blue and indigo work, the work of the adept. The type of work then may also be enhanced by these cosmic in-streamings in a more conscious fashion, shall we say. It is often well to take special meditative periods in a daytime where you are able to retire into the quietness of the self, the greater self, and allow the cosmic in-streamings to be perceived within your own energy centers. Visualizing that center then being opened, fully cleared and cleaned, so that as you move from the green to the blue and the indigo, you are creating a pathway for contact with intelligent energy, and then intelligent infinity that can bring through the healing energies of the one creator to be utilized in whatever manner is chosen. It is recommended that each healer be conscientious in the apprehension and utilization of these cosmic energies, for they are quite powerful. It is well to form a, shall we say, ritual or pattern of use of such energies in your healing practice, so that you see your connection to the universe through these cosmic in-streamings thusly becoming figuratively said a hand of God, working in a manner which is in alignment with the highest and best for the one to be healed. This is a process which allows the use of these energies in the most propitious manner, for they are at this time in great abundance, and there is the possibility of, shall we say, an overdose of such, if particularly conscious attention is not paid to how they are used. In another question, they ask, I've got a couple in the same line of questioning. The first one might be very similar to the last response, but I'd like to ask. One of the effects that we've talked about this evening is an increased ability to manifest our own reality, or more specifically, the effect that our thoughts have on our reality. And this seems like it carries a pretty heavy responsibility in terms of how we handle our thoughts. I was wondering if you could talk specifically about that and the role that sort of ability plays in the path of a positive seeker. I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my brother. The thoughts that a seeker thinks are the basic representation of the seeker's being. They are the most important feature, which when balancing is continued or begun, may be considered first. The thoughts have a power that comes from within the being that may be seen as developed during the incarnation or even being pre-incarnatively originated. The thoughts then begin to reflect the seeker's attitude or perspective upon the world. This attitude determines how the world is experienced. Thus, the thoughts that one thinks are the signposts or guidelines, which are, shall we say, filled in by experience in the daily round of activities. Thusly, if one wishes to manifest a certain quality within one's life pattern, it is possible to hold the image of the desired manifestation in thought, in meditation, and draw unto one that particular quality or thing. There is also the strong possibility that one fears is also drawn to one. Thusly, it is well to take care with those fearful thoughts that may hold some type of sway over one's perception in any particular area of endeavor. It is well not to act out of fear or to react to fear, but to balance it with the knowledge that each is the one infinite creator, that there is nothing to fear for all is well. We all live and move and have our being within 
a creation of unity. They ask, if the effect of our thoughts on our reality is increasing, it seems like that creates sort of a disorientation for our society as people all have their own individual beliefs and stories. And I would guess that has something to do with the seeming increasing separation and polarization in something like our political sphere. Can you give any advice on how to navigate this sort of new landscape where individual people's realities are becoming more and more solidified in their own perception? And how can we interact with others when their reality seems so different from our own? I am Quo and I'm aware of your query. Each entity has its own pattern and time of awakening. Those entities who are most successful at allowing their pre-incarnative choices to manifest within their life patterns find there is a freer flow of energy that occurs when they are able to do this. This intelligent energy flowing through one's being then is not obstructed by any blockages of convoluted or distorted thought patterns. This allows the seeker to move in a harmonious fashion with the energies thusly energizing the positive desire to be of service to others. Those upon your planetary sphere who do not consciously have a spiritual path of seeking have certain configurations of mental activity and patterns of thought which are also increased or solidified by the intelligent energy streaming to your planet at this time. This is in accordance with what they have chosen for their life pattern at this time. The intelligent energy is simply an indifferent, neutral magnifier of what is. Thusly, the choices that have been made by each person upon the planetary sphere are likely to be enhanced, so that they may go further in that direction as a function of their free will of choice. If at some point the distance they have traveled into that type of thinking becomes uncomfortable for them, they are always free to choose another path. And this is what is possible for many upon your planet at this time, for they have over a period of many years been used to the control of media advertising or government policies or peer pressures or the various ways in which the third density cultures exert pressure over other peoples. Thusly, that which is becomes greater as it is affected by the cosmic in-streamings. And when you see yourself moving into interactions with such entities, it is well to keep in mind firstly that you are seeing the Creator standing in front of you, that this Creator has made certain choices that it may or may not be aware of. Certain choices may be causing a various kind of disorientation, or pain, or anger, or jealousy, or of many other types of emotions so that they are at the mercy of their own previous choices. A great deal of compassion may be felt for such entities, for they know not what they do, and yet they continue to do it. If you can give your love in some way that supports what you see as the core of their being, that is the creator in human form, then you have done all that you can do in the way of relating in a fashion that is helpful and is truthful. There is oftentimes the desire to suggest certain changes in their behaviors. If this is asked for, it is possible to aid in that way as well. However, to offer advice that is not asked for is not usually helpful. In another question, they ask, My question is, what is healing? It seems as though we're all working toward healing. And whether it be our world, the environment, ourselves, each other, and even within the physical body, it seems as though there are blockages, whether they be physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, so is healing the bringing of light and removing the blockages and can you clarify? I am quote and aware of your query, my sister. Healing in the very most basic sense is creating an atmosphere within an entity's mind-body-spirit complex where each energy center is able to allow the intelligent energy of the one infinite creator to move clearly and cleanly through each center and ascending to the violet eventually realizing unity with the one creator. This is the ideal. However, the various blockages that are found in the lower energy centers are usually a product of pre-incarnative choices that represent lessons that the entity wishes to learn during the incarnation. The blockages oftentimes are a representation of how the mind has failed to apprehend the lesson at hand, and thus the lesson has been given to the body in a symbolic form that will hopefully concentrate the intention of the seeker upon the catalyst 
or the situation which has brought about the blockage. Usually this is a certain configuration of mind which sees a certain kind of relationship in a distorted fashion. So that there is the need to balance the perception. If these balances can be achieved by the seeker, then the blockages can be removed. If this is not possible for the seeker alone, oftentimes a healer may aid in such healing by offering to the one to be healed an opportunity to see the blockage more clearly in the metaphysical sense, so that it may choose to release the distorted perception and embrace a novel configuration that would equate with healing. The healer does this by allowing the entity to reach a contact with its higher self that then appraises the situation and determines whether the appropriate degree of learning of the lesson has been achieved. If this is the case, then the healing very likely will take place, and that which is broken will be made whole. Now there is a sort of controversial question that is about COVID and the coronavirus, and I don't want to have this video get flagged or anything, so I'm going to read a portion of this. And they're talking about this. This is in February, and it has not really popped up in America, but very little. So they ask about the entities that are receiving or that are getting the virus. And Quo says, the entities so involved in this experiencing of the coronavirus are entities which have pre-incarnatively offered themselves in service to the planetary mind in order that there may be a resolution or completion of certain cycles of vibration. That is to say, there may be a realization of their ability to serve their fellow human beings by becoming infected in a fashion which reflects the need to find a cure for this particular virus. This is a manner of being which each entity undertook in order to become more able to open their own hearts in love and compassion for others. For as they find themselves afflicted with this particular virus, they become more and more compassionate for their fellow human who have this virus within their being and must suffer the consequences. Thus it is a way of, shall we say, utilizing a negative initiative in a positive fashion that was foreseen before the incarnation began. Side note, check out my episode where Seth talks about the pandemics and he says the same thing. That people that get infected with the virus oftentimes are doing it as a service as a calling out and sometimes it's a rebellion against circumstances. If you go back through history, that's what we're seeing. Quo goes on to say there are many such possibility probability vortices that have been and are possible within your third density illusion at this time. For the harvest time is a time of great upheaval and change. There is much volatility amongst many nations and individuals and groupings within nations that make it necessary for the type of experience that is now being felt to be assessed in a manner which does not bring fear. However, most entities are subject to the fear aspect of such an outbreak of a virus of this nature. There is in such an experience the opportunity to see that the Creator is knowing itself in all that happens around one and within one. When this type of attitude can be taken, then the negative efforts to control population in one manner or another may be transmuted alchemically individually for each entity so able to do so in a manner which sees the planetary game as that which is played upon the world stage in a manner that can offer an entity a greater variety of responses. If the entity can choose the positive vision of the creator experiencing itself, then it draws unto itself the basic nature of the power of the truth of unity that is, that all is one and that though one may pass from this life, there is no loss. The one still remains in each entity and in each endeavor. So that there's always the knowledge that the one who exists in all is always there experiencing this event in a manner which informs the creator more and more of the nature of itself. They then ask, Ra mentions that these so-called contagious diseases are of those entities of second density which offer an opportunity for this type of catalyst. If this catalyst is unneeded, then these second density creatures, as you call them, do not have an effect. In each of these generalizations, you may please note that there are anomalies so that we cannot speak to every circumstance, but only to the general run or way things as you experience them. And as, as continues, so it seems in cases of anomalies, even if the catalyst is unneeded, 
these second density creatures can still have an effect. I just wonder if SARS is one of these anomalies, since SARS can be regarded as a biological weapon, according to Quo. If so, is it always possible for those infected with any man-made virus to nullify its effects and heal themselves? I ask this question just for this purpose of encouraging hope and faith in these cases of anomalies. Quo says, I am Quo and am aware of your query, my brother. We would agree that the conscious seeker of truth who finds the spiritual path to the one to be the only path worth traveling. This type of virus can be seen as a mere rock upon the path that may be avoided by seeing the one in all and loving the one in all, no matter what is the action of any upon one. As attempts are made to control one, if one can give love without expectation of return and resist not evil, then one has power over evil which cannot be broken. It is the power of love, the power to cure all that is unwell, to make whole all that is broken, and to bring to light all that is hidden. In another question, they reference a quo session from May 28, 1995, in which they talked about metaprograms of consciousness available to seekers. And the quote they ask about, there are layers of which you call metaprograms available according to the intensity of seeking and shall be released as a kind of, shall we say, time capsule, but more in the desired release nature. Lily writes, I wonder if Quo may give us examples of these metaprograms of consciousness. Quo says, I'm aware of your query, my sister. We find that such metaprograms are utilized by entities who are working within the higher energy centers so that an experience in the daily round of activities may be seen to be available to each energy center and what you may call the meta program in higher and higher aspects. You may meet a person on the street and have a collision, say, with cars, and the beginning conversation begins with anger and confusion and the testing of the survival of the red ray, and then perhaps one of the entities suggests that maybe there is another way and a conversation has begun. And there is the opportunity to see how each contributed to the accident and that it would not have happened had not both done what they did. Then the energies may be raised even higher to the yellow ray as the entities converse with local officials investigating the accident so that the joint decision of both parties to the accident is seen to be recorded in the official records of the police, shall we say. After such an experience, it is possible that a continued relationship could develop so that eventually the entities could share in green ray love and acceptance of each other, finding coincidences in their lives that brought them together at that point in time that resulted in what was called an accident and yet could be a coincidence. This may be taken further and further for those who would become adepts, but we feel that it is sufficient for this type of designation that the one known as Lily is desiring. In another question, why does Ra call crystal frozen light? Quo says, I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my sister. Ra calls crystals frozen light because they began as light, which was in movement with photons vibrating at various angles of rotation in various speeds of rotation. So that the light was a certain nature and as this light then created a conjunction with various minerals or earth elements, on any particular planetary sphere under the conditions of the first density where the wind and fire teach earth and water to be formed so that life could become viable and minerals could be formed. Then there are various types of crystals that are formed in this type of an environment. The light of intelligent energy begins to interact with other types of earthly minerals and creates in some instances due to volcanic eruptions or other heating effects, the kinds of crystals that you are aware of that have an organized latticework structure that allows them to transduce the intelligent energy or light of the creator in a certain fashion because they are in harmony with all light. In another set of questions in a practice channeling done on January 29th, they started to talk about sexual energy transfer, asking when sexual experience is shared between people through the internet, phone conversation or in a video communication is there still an exchange of energies as described by Ra and the Law of One books? Does any form of technology or distance hinder, block, or diminish this sacred energy exchange? I am Quo, and I am aware of the query, my brother. When we start to address this query by examining what you may call the metaphysical properties and principles of space-time and time-space, 
for in our understanding the distance within your physical realm of space-time is in essence an illusion thus such distance between two entities in theory should not hinder the exchange of energy sexual or otherwise yet we encourage you to consider the ways in which you seem bound by the laws of this illusion there is a physics that you are aware of nearly all entities within your realm upon your planet must adhere to it is similar with this principle of the exchange of energies though the distance between two entities is illusory the proximity and most importantly physical connection aid greatly in the ability of two entities to exchange energies particularly sexual energy exchange however while the physical closeness and intimate touch are of great aid the technologies given as example do indeed help to bridge the gap and bring two entities closer to the efficiency of energy exchange that can be had when in literal close proximity and as two or more entities continue to connect from a distance each refining their desire and their will to share their energies the distance between the two entities plays less of a role and the exchange of energies may happen more and more easily and with more and more efficiency so while you may say there is a great benefit in close proximity as opposed to greater distance this is not a full hindrance and continued to practice and refinement of this desire between entities may offer similar grand and meaningful exchange of the magical qualities of sexual energy in your realm i imagine that's pertinent to many in our illusion now and the experience of the pandemic gary says yes another question from j1 is what is the cause of the emptiness that some people feel post coil is there a spiritual component to feeling empty and in some cases apathetic quo says i am quo and i'm aware of your query my brother in addressing a query which asks about an individual experience it is difficult to diagnose if you will a specific cause of such state however we may offer insight into potential sources of such catalyst and methods for determining for the self the source and how to balance this catalyst in general entities sharing energies sexually with clear energetic pathways to the green ray chakra of universal love will experience an immense feeling of both giving and receiving upon the completion of this physical energy exchange thus it would imply that a feeling of emptiness in such a state points to a blockage within the entity's energy system in some energy center preceding the green ray chakra the description of a loneliness and an emptiness may suggest this blockage is within the orange ray chakra that of personal identity and the blockage that exists within this chakra then expressing itself as unworthy of receiving a positive exchange having the initial sexual desire and being satisfied the energy cannot express itself in a more spiritual sense because this very fundamental energy center is unable to receive these sexual energies for an entity who experiences this catalyst we would suggest that attempting to explore this distortion whether it is as we have described or otherwise is beneficial prior to continuing to engage in sexual activities and attempting to offer or receive sexual energy transfer for when an entity experiences such personal blockage and then attempts to exchange energy upon this level the potential for this blockage to create further distortion within the self or within other self increases we suggest that this catalyst of blockage be explored in a sexual sense only with another entity who shares a meaningful spiritual connection of trust and love in all other aspects of life so that these entities may create a space where these distortions may be explored otherwise for the individual entity experiencing blockage looking inward in meditation and calling for the love and light of the creator to offer them insight and healing is highly suggested in another question why has there been so much sexual violence throughout history and what is the best way to heal from it and then adds i know unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness is critical however so many people are so far from and removed by this violence that the idea of forgiveness is insulting to them i am quo and i'm aware of this query my brother this particular query extends deep into the depths of distortion among your social complex and indeed these distortions are so deep and tangled they may not be adequately addressed in a setting such as this but we will offer what we can in an attempt to shed light on this greatest of distortions among your peoples if you examine closely in an individual scenario the origin of the impulse to commit sexual violence you will often find that such an impulse is born itself from violent trauma 
whether inflicted upon the perpetrator at an early age or absorbed generally from the collective consciousness of your people. The use of sexuality to impose control and harm upon another may seem to have its origins from your planet's second density evolution. One may look upon how the entities within your so-called animal kingdom behave and might perceive that force and harm originate from the so-called animal instinct within the human nature. Yet from our perspective, this original impulse of control and harm through sexuality is only tenuously related to those animal instincts, and instead was originally introduced as a simple aspect of free will among your peoples to explore the depths of darkness offered by the veil of forgetting. And upon that initial impulse of an entity inspired to commit such acts, these impulses were able to be energized and triggered by both service to self-oriented entities, hoping to impose certain distortions upon your social complex and thought forms born of the social complex itself, finding a most efficient outlet to express control and domination through sexual activity. This impulse, as you are well aware, has been energized to an intense magnitude and offers to your planet as a whole at this time one of the greatest catalysts that your social complex has to, you may say, contend with as it evolves further towards the fourth density. We suggest that such an intense distortion among your peoples requires a similar amount of patience on behalf of those who are able to find it. Though the expectation placed upon what you would call a victim of patience and forgiveness if placed upon the entity from another self may tend to increase distortion and cause further harm. And so we suggest that as your society begins to become aware of its need to address the various distortions within your social complex, that individuals, whether those who have experienced and have been a victim of sexual violence, or those who care for such individuals or even perpetrators, as you would call them, who have turned towards the light of the Creator's love and recognize the harm that they have caused, such healing as needs to take place will take place through such individuals who dedicate themselves in an intense way within their lifetimes to bringing healing through many avenues. But perhaps most importantly, extending those harmed by sexual violence their patience and love, and creating spaces carefully curated in which those with such wounds may express themselves freely and be received with total acceptance and offered a light touch of encouragement and love as they are able to find their ability to heal the self of all wounds. For a casual seeker not ready to dedicate their lives to this healing, we do suggest a deference to those with experience and have demonstrated within their lifetime the dedication needed to approach this type of healing responsibly and with care. In another question they ask, please talk about how our beliefs create reality. How important are our beliefs? Are there any beliefs that generally could serve for our and the universe's well-being? We are those known to you as Quo, and we finish answering this instrument's challenge as he spoke prior to our response, and do indeed affirm that we come in the name of unconditional love, and we would reply to A's question, the one known as, and affirm to our brother that indeed beliefs are rightly assigned a classification of importance. Beliefs are the programming of the self's perception of the self's experience of the self and other self, of the self's experience of reality itself. Indeed, without belief, and we caveat that word in the indication that while the term belief will suffice, it is not completely adequate to the task. We continue by resuming our response that indeed, without belief, there would be only awareness of the all. It is the beliefs that shape a unique experience into existence to be distorted further by associated and consequent beliefs. For example, if one believes they are not worthy of love, they will have a corresponding experience, particularly if that belief is deeply rooted and unconscious to the conscious mind. Such an entity will relate to others according to this belief and attract to themselves further experiences mirroring to them this belief, which may then precipitate the opportunity for additional or associated beliefs and on and on. This cascade of processes may transpire. Indeed, on the pre-incarnational level, the self will program for specific beliefs about the identity of the self. For example, I will believe, says the entity on the pre-incarnational level, that I will. We correct this instrument, that anger is an appropriate response to situations which cannot be controlled, or I, says the entity pre-incarnationally, will carry confused beliefs about my gender orientation or about my exercise of personal power or about my place in society and so forth. 
These are codes of instruction that, as we have said, will shape the entity's experience and generate the catalyst that will help the entity to learn its intended lessons. And to move forward into the question about helpful or positive beliefs, we would again affirm the fruit of this line of inquiry by indicating that indeed beliefs are not created equal and may, shall we say, move an entity along in various directions. Beliefs may isolate and limit and deny and negate the self insofar as they are unexamined and believed to be true and left to their operations in the shadows. Conversely, beliefs may liberate the self from belief itself or beliefs may prompt one to the care and serving of others, to the expansion and free giving of self. Indeed, as belief moves upward in the chakras and the self believes that it is appropriate and right to freely give love without expectation of return, such a belief then helps to activate, open, and crystallize eventually the heart chakra. Eventually, the scattered and often tangled beliefs that form blockages open and organize and synthesize into a unified self that is increasingly one-pointed, which reaches the apex of belief, which moves beyond belief into gnosis or lived experience that is the self as infinite, that all is infinite, that all is the creator and the various other expressions that give pointers to the state where the individual self, full of its benefits and stories, is dissolved or made transparent to the one. I found this question to be interesting. Upon their death, do pets go through anything like a life review where they get to experience the joy they brought to their people? Quo says, we are those of Quo and thank you for this query at this time. The process which those of the advanced second density move through upon the cessation of their orange ray complex physical vehicle is different than that which the mind-body-spirit complex of the yellow ray moves through. The evolutionary lessons for the second density entities are, shall we say, less complex, more rapid, and have to do with the awakening of the spirit complex and the growing awareness of the second density entity as an individual entity. As it moves through the gateway of its own death, there is indeed some assimilation of experience of the just lived incarnation and a moved forward with the momentum and upon the trajectory set by its lived experience and its choices therein. But we give this instrument the sense that it lacks the planning and coordination that the third density entity experiences. In another question, some families have both service to self and service to other members. While it is well to think we are all one, should service to other entities keep a relationship with a service to self family member who is willing to cause harm to other selves? Should service to others entities keep a relationship with a service to self family member when this relationship results an ongoing struggle between the subjugation and rejection of subjugation. I suppose there must be a metaphysical reason for both service to other and service to self being born in the same family unit. I am Quo, and I am aware of your query, my brother. This is a situation in which there is no clear distinction between the service to self and service to other entities as regards the family of origin. It must be remembered that this is an illusion in which we all live as individual mind-body-spirit complexes which have come to learn certain lessons. And these lessons oftentimes seem to be quite damaging in the short run for some of the members of the family unit. The damage that is done is when there is no understanding or compassion that is shared in a concrete sense from one member to another. And instead, there is that which seeks harm and damage, be it of the mind, the body, or the spirit of another member of the family. This provides a great challenge for the positively oriented entity. For to remain in such a relationship is to encourage further harm from the entity that seems to be bent on offering only harm and seems to be of a negative nature. In such a situation, it is often that the one who is the service to others entity must make a choice as to how to experience the relationship with the seeming negative entity. The service to others entity who has made the choice of positive polarity knows that at the base of all being are all one. However, this unity may be expressed in a way in which there are challenges that are too great to continue, being so damaging as to distort the incarnational patterns. In such a situation, it would be our recommendation, which we suggest be considered carefully there would be a mutual agreement that each should go its own way and sever the ties 
that not only bind, but tend to break the service to others entity. It is further recommended that the service to others entity meditate within its private times to see the nature of the service to others family member, that being which needs to be severed while remaining in love with the entity at the level of the soul where the entity is the creator without negative polarity interfering with the relationship between the two. As this type of an experience is had and evolves into the separation of the two, it is hoped that only the negative entity shall see this situation as true separation. It is hoped that the positive entity can see that, though there shall no longer be the physical presence of one with the other, that in truth both are still united in the nature of a unified creation, so that there may be free expression of each entity's polarity without affecting the other. There is one more question and answer session I found somewhat curious when they ask, What are demons? How did those beings become so separated of the love and the purposes of the Creator? I am Quo and am aware of your query, my sister. These entities are seen as demons, are usually the projected thought forms of negatively oriented entities that utilize such thought forms in the attempt to control or to bring terror to certain entities so that they perhaps open themselves to further negative polarization if they are unable to correctly perceive the nature of the demon. Negatively oriented entities utilize such thought form projections in order to control certain entities through the concept of fear. The fear of these demons then is seen as that which could be ameliorated or removed by the negative entity for the object of its desire to control the entity that it is sending the demon to bring fear to. Thusly, the demon is that quality that has been constructed by the negative entity after ascertaining the kind of being a certain third density entity may find a reaction of fear for. Therefore, the demon is, shall we say, personally constructed for a particular mission for not only a certain entity, but a certain type of entity, usually the weaker-minded entity that is unable to look beyond the demon and see that it is a creature of the one infinite creator in its ultimate reality. And when there is love and light transmitted to it from the entity that was full of fear for it, then there is the transmutation of the demon within the mind of the entity instead of fear. This is a means by which the entity, which was the object of the demon, and the object of the negatively oriented entity's efforts to control, then is able by calling to a higher power to move itself beyond the level of the negatively oriented entity and the demon, and to shower both with the love and the light of the one infinite creator, which is heartfelt. For there is, within this entity, then, the feeling that the one creator is the ultimate type of resource that all seekers of truth may call upon to deal with any demon or any perceived negativity within the life experience. The negativity is that which is produced by the path of that which is not, that is, the path of negativity which cannot long endure within the octave of experience, as we mentioned in the previous query. Each positively oriented entity, then, that comes in contact with any type of negative experience or demonic presence may, within the meditative state, shower this entity or presence, then, with the love and the light that channels from the one infinite creator through its open heart to the negatively oriented entity, blessing it on its way, as it then begins to see that there is the one creator existing in all of the creation within any demon, within any negatively oriented entity, and especially within the self, and will aid the self in seeing the nature of the reality of the one creator that exists within all. At this time, we shall take our leave of this instrument and this group, thanking each, as always, for the opportunity to share your loving vibrations this particular day. We are always amazed at the perseverance of such seekers of truth who move within a difficult illusion, and yet find so much love and presence of the one infinite creator within their journey of seeking. We are known to you as those of Quo. We leave each in the love and the light of the one infinite creator, Adonai Vasu Boragas. Note, if you had the ability to see auras and emotions, if you were able to see planet Earth from an orbiting satellite today, you would probably think that the Earth was on fire. And one of the hottest spots in this worldwide conflagration would be America. The COVID pandemic, political division, racism, 
The 1% wealthy and powerful looking to become wealthier and more powerful have set emotions blazing out of control. In such an incendiary atmosphere, it is hard to remember that this is all an illusion created to help each person on earth to use their personal catalyst to polarize sufficiently to make the choice. For those of the positive path, that is the choice to serve others. And when the clock strikes, graduate into the fourth density of love and understanding. So as we observe the heat of anger and separation within ourselves and our world today, it points to the difficulty people are having to use their catalyst for growth. Rather than processing our anger into more compassionate responses, the general tendency seems to be to dig in our heels and defend our point of view, more than reaching for deeper understanding. This may be humanity's last great chance to seek harmony by first looking within, processing our difficult emotions and communicating with an open heart. As Ross said, the moment contains love. That is the lesson goal of this illusion or density. Such a wonderful way to end this. So many things in this channeling to discuss. I wouldn't know where to begin. I do find it very compelling, this idea that many entities choose to become infected as a service to others, as a sort of rebellion against what's going on in the planet, as a sort of cause or catalyst for social change in the world. Maybe it's not true, but that episode from Seth is very interesting. The discussion of how to deal with service to self and service to other separations in families. And I get this all the time. I talk to people that are married, to people that are service to self, that are incorporated with families like fathers and brothers that are completely the opposite of themselves, that are mean, that are manipulative, that are service to self, and they want to choose a path of service to others. And they're around people that are the opposite of their own beliefs. And it's very difficult. And there is a point where you need to separate from that person while you maintain a love for them on the soul level. You know that you're not truly separate, but you separate physically in a way so that they can move on their own path and you can move on yours so that it does not affect them. It's an interesting response that he gives. Some other interesting aspects of these teachings, particularly the idea that we're going through an increase in our ability to create reality, which is the reality revolution that I've discussed from the very beginning of this podcast, which we're going through not right now. And there is an influx or wave of energy. I discuss it in my book. I can feel it. If I sit in a tank uh, for a couple hours, within about 90 minutes in that time, I will feel the wave of energy. There's a wave of energy that's constantly coming to us at all times. This influx of energy is increasing and it's magnifying our ability to create reality, but it's also magnifying our fears. It's confirmed by Quo here and it's something that's very important. We see it in the world today all the time. What we were experiencing in the 90s and early 2000s is not what we're experiencing today. Our fears are writ large. Our reality is being created faster and it's because of these energies that are coming in. It's part of our lessons that we're learning. We are given greater abilities, but at the same time, there's a certain responsibility in doing this. There's a discussion in here on how our beliefs create reality and all of those things are important. Beliefs and thoughts create your reality. There's a lot of discussion in these channelings of pre-incarnational choices. And I say, don't get tied up in that. If there's a way for you to clear your subconscious of your pre-incarnational choices, I often think that I knew nothing about what I wanted in this lifetime. And if I did set up pre-incarnational choices, I was an idiot. Hopefully it helped me. I'd like to know and talk to myself what kind of pre-incarnational choices I gave because I would rather start on a blank slate. There's no need for me to give myself limitations. Maybe that's what works, but there's enough catalysts in the world that I will be given catalysts no matter what. So I find that interesting. In any case, 
I'd love to get your feedback on these particular channelings by Quo. I love Quo. It is authentic and powerful. These lessons feel very spiritual to me, and I continue to grow in my learning of Ra and the Law of One materials and the transition that we're going to to the fourth density. I'm just a student. I'm still learning. I'm still open to this stuff, and I'd still want to read more, and I'll find more, and we'll talk about this in further detail as we move along. In any case, all episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>